Welcome to our Palm Sunday service with the people of Wesley Place Allsager and Oak Hanger in the South Cheshire Circuit. Today we continue our theme on the Methodist way of life and we give a very warm welcome to the Reverend Helen Kirk, the Chair of the Chester and Stoke-on-Trent District, who is going to lead our thoughts on the theme of justice and service. So let us come with enthusiasm to meet the Lord today. Let us pour out our love and our praise and bring the best we can offer to our generous God. Let us pray. Lord of all, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the people welcomed him with praise and gave him the best they could offer. As we gather here today, we ask you to fill our hearts with joy and love. Help us to understand what it means to give freely and extravagantly of our time, our treasures and our talents. Most of all, inspire us to give you our praise. Amen. So let us now join together with the people of Jerusalem and folks throughout the ages to offer our praise with hosannas by singing hymn number 263. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray together. Hosanna in the highest. Praise to him who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus, honor, we honour you as King, 
We worship you as Lord. Lord, on this day of celebration, we come to thank you for the coming of Jesus. We remember his entry into Jerusalem and we thank you for his courage. We recall the events of the week ahead and we thank you for his dedication. We reflect on the agony of Good Friday and we thank you for his forgiving love. We are reminded of the crowd shouting Hosanna and we thank you for all who have praised him over the years and for those who help us worship today. Lord God, on this day of celebration, like the people of Jerusalem, we greet you with shouts of praise, but not with cloaks and palm branches alone, for we offer all that we have and are in thanks for all that we have received from you. We bring ourselves to you and ask that you will bless us. Lord God, we remember that a crowd shouted Hosanna and a crowd shouted crucify. One friend betrayed you, another denied knowing you. We remember that sometimes by thought, word or deed, or by inactivity, we let you down or hurt you. We are truly sorry. Help us as we remember how courageously you face death, to be brave in living for you. We praise you that you are always just, loving and merciful. Your opinion does not change like that of the crowd. If we are ready to say sorry, you are ready to forgive. Hosanna, Lord Jesus, we claim you as our Saviour and Lord. Accept our praise and thanksgiving. In your name we pray. Amen. When Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard Jesus passing, they shouted, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted all the louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called to them. What is it you want me to do for you? He asked. We want our sight, they said. Jesus had compassion for them and touched their eyes. Immediately their sight was received. They followed him. Hello and welcome to all the young people that are tuning in with us this morning. We hope that you're well and uh, keeping safe and looking forward to the Easter holidays, which is only just over, well, under a week away now. Um, so, yeah, we hope that you have some exciting things planned. Hopefully you've been sent over some of the kids' activities um, and either through Rob's email or through Facebook or through myself. Hopefully you can enjoy those um, and find some things to enjoy um, during this weekend. We're going uh, to have a craft activity. We've been thinking a little bit about uh, the run up towards Easter and today we're thinking about Palm Sunday. So we're going to have a craft to do with that. So for this craft, what you'll need is some white card or paper. I think card will be slightly better. Some colouring pens a lollipop stick, or as I said, a straw, something that you can hold up your uh, finished product, and then a little bit of sellotape as well, and a pair of scissors.
you've enjoyed making these donkey masks. There is a template online that you can follow, um, which is slightly better than mine. Or you can have a go at making your own donkey face and then um, colouring it in and making it look really nice. And the reason we've made these as is the reason we remember Palm Sunday as Jesus rode in on a donkey and all the people crowded into the streets and started praising him and shouting Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus rode in and uh, uh, said just a week before all the um, before Holy Week as um, all these events were about to take place. So we can remember that Jesus was known as Hosanna, the King of Kings. And we can still remember that today as as we worship and as we praise him. So why don't you have a go at making some of these at home? And we would love to see what you have done.
The Methodist way of life focuses on four elements of our calling that are at the heart of what it means to be a Methodist. Worship, learning and caring, evangelism and service. I have been asked today to say something about service. We are called as Christians to serve our community. We are called as Christians to care for creation. We are called as Christians to challenge injustice. This is our calling. Now that all seems like a really big subject to unpack in a few minutes here. But like all of the other headings, service is very much a part of our Methodist DNA. The Methodist movement sprang up in communities, often among working people, but always with the emphasis of lifting up and supporting those in greatest need. The Methodist people were at the heart of real cultural transformation, the abolition of slavery, education reform, prison reform. All of those things, the relief of poverty in so many ways, the challenge for a fair wage for everyone. And within the Methodist movement, uh, the gifts of a whole variety of people were enabled and used. Our preachers, our teachers, our leaders were men and women from diverse backgrounds. Our Methodist history is filled with people who in the name of Christ have done astonishing things to serve the needs of others. This is our heritage. It's a heritage to be celebrated, but it is also one that challenges us as to the nature of our church today. As chair of district, I am privileged uh, to know that this work of service goes on in all sorts of ways across our district. Homeless shelters, food banks, support for asylum seekers, eco-activism, the list goes on. But of course that means it's easy to say, well, someone else is doing this. It's not my problem. As we begin to emerge from this pandemic, we will face the issues in our society that are bubbling up. There are gaps, gaps of wealth, gaps that show up the poverty. There is a sense of loss that so many will be feeling. There are uh, dynamics of, of unequal power that have been exposed and a mental health crisis that appears to be growing. And all of this are on a planet that took a gasp of breath when everything locked down. And yet now is warming to a catastrophic level. Maybe now is the time to awaken our innate sense of who we are as Methodist people to once again take that lead as we serve our communities, as we seek to be a transformative people. But there's so much to deal with, isn't there? So many issues and, and, and we have few resources and we're all feeling tired, so... Where do we begin? When Jesus begins his ministry, he declares that he has come to bring good news to the poor, freedom to the oppressed and sight to the blind. And through the course of the Gospels, we see him doing all of those things. Today, however, I want to draw our attention 
to one little story in Matthew chapter 20. It's often overlooked because there are fuller stories of Jesus healing the blind that we often prefer. But in this story, we've got two blind men who sit on the roadside begging because they've got no other means of supporting themselves. I wonder how we might respond to them today. I wonder how we do respond to those we might find in our communities who have such need. Earlier in the pandemic, I was going to the Methodist Book Centre. And as I walked from my car up the road to the Book Centre, I realised there was a rough sleeper up ahead. And I did those mental gymnastics that we so often do. Do I give him money? Do I go and, and buy uh, some food? Uh, do I get in touch with one of the homeless shelters? What, what do I do in this situation? What's the best thing? And as I was going through that in my head, walking towards him, a white van pulled up and a young guy got out. He, he was dressed as a, as a builder or a joiner or, or, or something. And he got out of the van and uh, he sat down next to the rough sleeper and I heard him say, what's your name? And after the man had replied, I heard the young guy say, I've got a flask of soup for my lunch. Would you like to share it with me? It was so moving, so inspirational. I knew nothing about that person, nothing at all. But something in him. Maybe just that he felt lucky enough to have work to go to and a flask of soup made him do what he did. Jesus is at the centre of a crowd and this crowd are, are thronging round him. They are hoping to receive some word, some touch from uh, the celebrity in their midst. The two men are there on the fringes, ignored totally by the crowd and it would be easy to ignore them in such a throng. But when they shout out, the rest of the crowd tells them, ah, oh, shut up, be quiet, we don't want to hear from you. They take away these two men's voice. They render them silent. But these two guys will not be silenced. They shout even louder to Jesus. And Jesus stops in the midst of the crowd. And he turns towards them. In the midst of everything else that is going on around Jesus, he stops and listens to the voices of those who are on the margins, who are not part of the crowd, who have had their voice taken away from them. He stops, he hears, and then he doesn't presume to know what their needs are because he asks them what they want of him. There is nothing more important to Jesus at that moment than those two men. Our calling to serve is a calling to listen to those voices from the margins of our communities and our world. Despite everything else that is going on, despite the bustling crowd who will pull us one way, there is no more important voice than those who do not have one. So as we seek to act justly, to care for creation, to serve our community, the real question is, who are we listening to? I had the privilege recently of hearing a prominent black theologian talk about his experience of being a black leader within the Christian church. I heard him very gently talk of the prejudice he had experienced by fellow Christians and it reduced me to tears. I had heard 
all of the ways in which our churches are trying to change cultures, to have no tolerance of racism, all the strategies that we have put in. And I absolutely agree and they are they need to be there. But to hear somebody speak of it from a personal perspective was shocking. I wonder if in our desire to be an inclusive church we ever listen to those who've been excluded. I wonder if in our hope to welcome all do we ever listen to those who don't feel welcome. I wonder if in our quest to support those who are affected by poverty whether financial or social or digital or whatever it is do we seek to hear what they actually want. In our passion to raise issues of the environment, do we ever look to those whose lives are being blighted by climate change to lead us? We will only fulfil our calling to serve if we are willing to listen to the voices of those we seek to serve. How often do we seek to listen to the voices of those even within our own community? In each gospel there are stories of blind, the blind being healed. They show Jesus' uh, miraculous power. They illustrate that some can see and understand Jesus and who he is while others can't. But I think they illustrate something else. They illustrate the need to see our world differently, to look from a different perspective, to have our eyes opened by an experience that is different to our own. As we seek to fulfil our calling, to serve our community, to care for creation, to seek justice. I wonder who we will have the courage to listen to, who we will have the grace to ask to see life through their eyes. This is our calling. As we come to our prayers of intercession, let us just keep quiet for a moment and realise that We are in the presence of God. Lord Jesus Christ, you entered Jerusalem in quiet humility, taking the form of a servant, even to the point of death on a cross, emptying yourself so that we might be filled. Come again now and establish your kingdom. Come afresh to our troubled world with all its needs, its tensions, its problems and its evils. Come again now and establish your kingdom. We pray for all who are finding these days of restrictions difficult. We give thanks for the distribution of the vaccine and pray that as we slowly come out of lockdown, we may know the joy of a more normal way of life. Come again now and establish your kingdom. Bring healing where there is division, love where there is hatred, hope where there is despair, joy where there is sorrow, confidence where there is fear, strength where there is weakness, healing where there is sickness, 
life where there is death. Come again now and establish your kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, reach out to your church and world. Despite the weakness of our faith and the rejection of so many, may your will be done on earth, even as it is done in heaven. Come again now and establish your kingdom. For in your name we pray. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning. My special thanks go out to Helen Kirk for leading our thoughts and to all those involved in the leading and producing of this service. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you along to share in some of our special Holy Week and Easter events this coming week. On Thursday, please join us by Zoom, sharing in a love feast, sharing our faith and eating together at 7 p.m. On Good Friday, there will be a special act of worship and reflection, which will be posted on our YouTube channel. On Holy Saturday, bring along a hot cross bun and a cup of coffee and meet on Zoom to share fellowship together. And on Easter Sunday morning, there will be a recorded act of worship on YouTube, followed by coffee and fellowship uh, on Zoom at 11.30. So please come along and join us in some of these special services for Holy Week and Easter. Let us now join together in a blessing. Gracious God, we thank you for bringing us together today. We bless you for being our hero and the focus of our praise. Send us out from this act of worship full of love, and joy and hope. Let our enthusiasm be infectious to those we meet and may others be drawn to you, especially in this most holy of weeks.
Amen. Thank you.